I'm on a quest to industrialize, and that means harnessing the powers of nature and putting them to work for me. In the past, I've been able to capture the power of water to spin a water wheel and power my own sawmill. But unfortunately, I do not have a stream of water near me, so I had to create an artificial source. In this video, I'm gonna try and harness a force that's pretty much everywhere, the wind. And for my design, I'm gonna to put to test an old drawing by Leonardo da Vinci and see if his unique perspective on this design actually works. So let's put it to the test and see if I can put nature to work for me. Before we begin building the full-size windmill, let's convert the sketch by Da Vinci into a miniature with the help of the laser cutter OM Tech sent me to try out. I've been pretty impressed with this laser cutter, so check out the discount code in the description if you want to get one yourself. So the windmill we're going to build is going to have four main components. The first one is going to be the actual tower that it stands on, and for that I can actually reuse the tower that I built for the sawmill. Then on top of that we're going to build the actual head of the windmill, and that needs its own little wooden frame, and that also needs to pivot with the wind so it points the right direction. Then there'll be the gearing inside of it and that's gonna help translate the horizontal rotation into a vertical rotation and also gear it up and speed it up a little bit faster speed. And then lastly, there'll be the actual sails which will catch the wind and push it and make it rotate. So let's get started. Check out my new merchandising company, How To Make History, if you wanna buy your own kit to build your own miniature Da Vinci windmill. In this video, we're covering how to make a windmill, but we can also tell you how to improve your online privacy, which brings us to today's sponsor, DuckDuckGo. Privacy Pro is their powerful three-in-one subscription service that helps protect your personal info from being exploited by hackers, scammers, and privacy invasive companies. Plus, it's from DuckDuckGo, and I trust them because their browser already has thousands of five-star reviews. First up, let's talk about DuckDuckGo VPN. It's easy to set up in just a few clicks, and it secures your Wi-Fi connection on up to five devices anytime, anywhere. Plus, it hides your device location and IP address from the sites you visit. So you can browse, game, shop, or whatever you do online with an extra layer of protection. Then there's personal information removal. Ever searched yourself online? It's pretty creepy what's out there. Name, email, and even home address. On desktop devices, Privacy Pro helps find and remove your info from data brokers and people search sites, taking steps to keep it removed. Finally, it includes identity theft restoration, a service that helps restore your identity if it gets stolen. It includes 24-7 assistance and even helps fix credit reports mistakes and help replace lost wallet items like bank cards. Try Privacy Pro for seven days or by scanning the QR code on the screen or clicking the link in the description. Then pay just $9.99 a month. So we got the, uh, the head of the windmill set up here and nice elaborate setup to try and steam bend it and I think I got maybe two degrees. So that didn't go too well so I think I'm just gonna, just gonna do some slices here so we can just kind of bend it in. Give it a nice curved look. Uh, I won't be as strong, but it's not too structural for it. So we'll just do it the easy way.
This is our gearing system. We found through uh, previous projects that precision is key. Uh, we did have a lot of struggles with things like the rope making machine, which is why we inevitably ended up going with like a pulley type system instead of gears. It turns out the spacing between each peg is paramount to making it work successfully. If there's even like a couple millimeters off, uh, the gearing will inevitably catch and bind up, um, which is problematic. However, uh, with this, I think we've got it locked in pretty good. Also, with building a bigger machine like this, obviously there's gonna be a lot of load-bearing parts, so we wanted to reinforce everything as much as we could, um, which is the purpose of these big reinforcing blocks on the end of each gear. We have one here, and then one in the back of this one, to the point where we even have steel pins running through uh, this block, because we figured there's gonna be a lot of torque uh, right on this area here, and then a lot of torque on the shaft running through our uh, lantern gear as well. In making more precise gears, we did come up with a lot of like temporary makeshift jigs uh, to get our drill bit to go through straight. I think we're making pretty good progress. One of the concerns we have moving forward is how this entire top section will rotate on the frame. There's obviously gonna be a lot of weight bearing down on the shaft and onto the frame. In some of the like interpretations of the designs we've looked at so far, we're hoping have been over-engineered where they'd have like a sort of wheel type bearing system. But we're kind of hoping that we can simplify it by essentially just having a wooden nut that everything rests on. And then if we grease and lubricate the nut well enough, we're hoping the whole thing will turn freely enough in the wind, but we'll see. The next major challenge is going to be the actual sails, which spin the windmill. And for that, Da Vinci really doesn't give us much guidance. I've seen a lot of different interpretations of different ways his sails may have been intended, but his drawing is very vague. So I went back and forth between a few different designs, between things more directly inspired by Da Vinci versus kind of the, the style used by most wooden windmills. And there's apparently a, a lot of different ways to potentially do this. So I ended up going with a method that I thought would be the easiest to build and hopefully use the least amount of material, which would result in something a little bit lighter and more efficient. So I went with that and kind of tried to do it in a way that gives it a decent amount of angle on the actual blades. After we actually put it together though, we found it to be pretty much ineffective in the wind without it really pushing much. It has a large amount of surface area, but it isn't really wanting to spin. So I went back to do a little bit more research and get a little bit more specifics. And from what I've gathered, it's about 
10 to 15% degree angle is what you want on the sails. And then actually using some trigonometry, I could figure out the angle of our sails. And then in retrospect, I realized why windmill sails are often square, even though they're coming out from a radial base, because it's easier to maintain a consistent angle. When you have them coming out at different degrees, averages out as it goes out, getting closer to the edge. By the point it reaches the end, we're only at around a one and a half degree angle, which is a ways off from 10 to 15 degrees and probably why it doesn't really work. So I'll have to do some adjusting. I don't know if we want to make it any shorter. I, I think we really want to capture as much wind as possible. So I think it's just gonna be steepening the angle and hopefully getting somewhere closer to 15 degrees. So we give that a shot and hopefully we can get this thing spinning. Well, sh Unfortunately, while making the adjustments, the base of the tower broke, abruptly dropping the head about an inch which ended up being enough to snap the axle at a weak joint. So I'll have to now do some quick repairs and replacements. While I was already rebuilding it, I decided to try and improve the ability of the head to rotate with the wind by forging some simple rollers. Unfortunately, in the process of actually building it, there wasn't much wind and there wasn't much wind for the next few days. Basically, it just stood still there for a while. However, winds were to pick up in the next few days. So I set up a trail camera so I could catch, hopefully as it starts to spin, and I could get a little, at least some evidence of our windmill in action. So as the wind started to pick up, it very easily rotated the head to change direction. I think we got a lot of shifting winds because it rotated quite a bit. It's actually kind of surprising how much easier it is to rotate than actually spin the sails. So it seemed like it took a fair amount of buildup of wind before the sails actually started spinning and we got our actual motion to the windmill. You got pretty good evidence that our machine does work quite well actually. Um, spins pretty good, all the gearing works, and we have a really solid base for the next steps. Unfortunately, as the winds picked up, it started to get a little bit wobbly. The, the rollers that I had for it kind of uh, flattened out, making it wobbly, wobbled it just enough to teeter over. It's right, and it's rising, it's rising terrible. Oh my, get out of the way, please. It's terrible, this is one of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's all the humanity. At the end of the day, I think we can prove this design is pretty effective. We can take the wind and transform it into a circular motion going horizontally, and we can then transfer it to a vertical with our gearing system, which we can then eventually attach to a grindstone or whatever else we want to attach it to. So this is gonna be the second part of this video. It's kind of refining this and adding that mechanism for grinding grain. In the process now I have actually acquired a fair amount of grain, uh, an entire field of corn that I was able to grow this last year with the intention of turning into whiskey. This is actually gonna be on my new channel, uh, which is gonna be focused just on food called Everything Food Craft. So you have check that out if you haven't seen that yet. I, I have my first video on there already. The goal is to use the corn that we harvested there and grind it using our windmill. So we have several hundred pounds of corn grain to grind up before we can actually turn it into whiskey should be a long challenge. So that's gonna be an actual second part video to this, is gonna be kind of refining our windmill and getting it more optimized and attaching it to an actual grindstone. And I think the, the big thing to optimize and the thing that like really would be helpful if Da Vinci had some creative innovations with more would be the actual sails of the windmill. I went with a design that felt intuitive that we should build those sails as big as possible to catch as much wind. I think I'm probably a little bit 
misguided with that. The more I read about it, the more I feel like you actually want them fairly small, but I'm thinking I'd probably be better off probably scaling them down. So I'm looking forward to kind of experimenting with that and refining that and uh, seeing what ends up working best for it. Right now, I feel like it's more providing too much resistance that it just wants to kind of topple it over rather than spin it. So I think smaller blades. So fitting into the bigger picture, developing devices like the windmill allows us to kind of explore capturing energy and putting it to work and the different gearing and other systems for that. But also more directly, my interest is in a device that was first invented for helping to regulate things on the windmill called a centrifugal governor. And that's a device that was first invented for windmills, but was later utilized in the steam engine, a, a crucial component of the steam engine. So I want to first explore its origin in the windmill and that's kind of why we're going down this rabbit hole. Thank you again to all my supporters on Patreon. Without you, this won't be possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.